Hi, my name is Deepti. Thanks for tuning in. So a little bit of history before we start our um, stretching practice. I took up running earlier in the year and um, done some formal runs, you know, all the way from a 5k to a half marathon. And um, I often find myself doing yoga poses, uh, yoga stretches after my runs to get um, rid of those tired muscles and also to improve mobility in the joints. Um, my husband, who's also a runner, has asked me so many times, um, you know, the series of poses or stretches that um, he can do after the runs. Uh, my running friends have asked me um, what other you know good yoga poses or stretches um, that they should do after their run so today's practice is dedicated to them so we'll get started on our bags supine i have my usual props so i encourage you to have a pair of blocks and a blanket something to cushion the knees if you have sensitive knees and then meet me on the mat on your backs slowly lower down Given that you just came back from a run, give yourself time. Bring the feet as wide as the mat. Hands come by your side. You can cactus out the arms. You can peel out the arms. Palms facing up or down. And just sway the knees side to side. Don't chill by the way. Nice and deep breathing. And then come back center. Draw your knees towards your chest. Hands can be behind the knees or on the shins. If you know you came back from a long run and knees are feeling sensitive, you can always slide your hands behind the knees. Knees are nice and wide. Finding some release in the low spine. Keep the chin tucked. And if you notice that your chin is lifting up, no matter how hard you try, you can always try sliding a blanket under the head. Maybe rocking side to side. Keep the ankles relaxed, muscles of the face relaxed. So running just doesn't tire out the legs if you have done long runs. You know that everything else, you know, gets sore, your shoulders, your neck, your arms. Come back, center, lower the left foot down, right foot reaches up, hands behind the right thigh, and then make some circles with your ankle. And then switch direction. And then curl the toes, hold here. Point the toes, hold. And then we'll go with our breath. So inhale, you point the toes, get a nice stretch in your ankle, front of the ankle. Exhale, flex the toes, drawing those toes towards the shin. Inhale, point. You might notice that my right knee is bent. So if your hamstrings you know, are not giving you room to straighten the leg, if they feel tight, please bend your knee. Inhale, point the toes. Exhale, flex. One more. Inhale, point. Exhale, flex, hold here. And now try to push the thigh away from you. What you don't want to do is in your desire to straighten the leg, you move the leg away from you too much. Keep it close. Work towards pushing that heel up towards the sky and toes towards the shins. As long as you feel the stretch, you're in a good place. And the more you flex the toes, the more you're going to feel in those calf muscles which tend to get sore. You can add a little movement. Inhale, bend the knee, relax the toes. Exhale, flex and extend. Two more, inhale and exhale. Last one, inhale and exhale. Bend the knee. Lower the foot, other side. So draw left knee towards chest, interlace the hands behind the left thigh and straighten out the leg to wherever you can go. Starting with some ankle rolls. You can close down the eyes if you know where you're going. Switch direction of those rolls. 
Yeah. You can be bent. Flex the toes. Hold. Point the toes. Hold. And then we'll start our movement on this side. So inhale, we bend the knee. Sorry, inhale, we point the toes. Exhale, flex. Yeah, the bending and extending of the knee will come after. Inhale, point. Exhale, flex. Once more. And exhale, flex. Maybe drawing the thigh a little close to you, pushing that heel energetically up towards the ceiling. <clears throat> and then we bend and extend the knee. Inhale, we bend. Exhale, extend. Pressing the low back into the ground and heel up towards the sky. Really lengthening the hamstring in two directions. Inhale, bend. Exhale, extend. Last one. Inhale, we bend. Exhale, extend. Pause here. Another breath. Bend the knee, lower the foot down. You can roll onto one side to find yourself up. We meet in table. Or you can just place the hands behind the knees and rock yourself up. Whatever feels good. Now, if you have a blanket handy, place it in the middle of the mat. And meet me in tabletop position, hands and knees. To give the shoulders room, you bring your hands as wide as the mat, spread the fingers nicely, stack shoulders above your wrist, um, hips above the knees. You can curl the toes for stability and just shake the hips side to side a little. We'll start with a few rounds of cow and cat. On the inhale, drop the belly, chest gaze forward, arch your spine for cow. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone for your cat. Close your breath for a few more rounds. Inhale, we arch, interior tilt in the pelvis. Exhale, round, exterior tilt. On the inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. And exhale, round. Few more with your breath. Really pressing the floor away when you round your spine. Last one, inhale and then pause here but do not hold your breath and do not dump down in your wrist. You're just drawing the shoulders away from your ears and squeezing those shoulder blades towards each other. One more breath and on the next exhale, round your spine, tuck the tailbone under and pause here. Don't stop breathing, just breathe in and out. One more breath. Come back to neutral spine. Shimmy the hips side to side. We'll transition into our downward facing dog. Upside down V. So maybe arching the spine a little. Lifting the knees. And sending hips up and back. Probably have to walk the feet back one foot distance. To find that down dog shape. Once you arrive there, I encourage you to find movement. Bending and extending. Moving the chest towards the thighs. And then pausing in your down dog for a few breaths. Keep the knees bent. But work towards pressing those heels towards the ground. Palms pushing away from the mat. Triceps hug in. And the sit spoon reach up towards the sky. As the chest is trying to reach towards the legs. One more breath. Lower the knees down. We'll come into Vachrasana. Make sure that you have a cushion under the ankles. You can always turn the blanket the other way around. Hands by our side. We'll do alternate shin lifts. So the front of the ankles become pretty tight after running. We just Stretching that part. Alternate shin lifts. You 
can keep alternating the um, legs or try lifting both the shins together. Sometimes keeping blocks under the hands can be helpful. I have long arms, so I have that advantage. One more breath. And release. Next up, we'll come into a counter stretch of what we just did. So maybe sliding back so that the knees have a nice cushion under them. And then come into your toe pose. Now for some of you, it will be hard to stack the um, head, shoulders and hips. And you might be leaning forward, which is totally fine. You decide how upright you can just sit. As long as you feel the stretch in the feet, you're good. Pausing here. Let me face the camera. We are going to do some stretches in this pose. Now, if it gets too challenging, we're going to be here for a bit. You can always come off your heels and be in a kneel position and still keep doing the upper body stuff. Next stretches first. So bring your right ear to right shoulder. You can always add the right arm to nudge the head down. You get a nice stretch in the side of your neck tend to build a lot of tension here. Whether you're running, walking or playing any kind of sport. Other side. Just being mindful that um, we don't arch our spine here. So sometimes I see people pushing their belly forward in this position happens naturally. So just make sure core is slightly engaged, belly is tucked in. Come back center and we'll do some movements side to side. Inhale center, exhale right ear to right shoulder. Inhale come back center, switch sides. Couple of more. On the inhale, come back center, exhale, go into the stretch. Last round, you could be moving faster or slower than me, so no worry, just do one last round each side. back center we should begin to feel some heat in our feet arm across the chest a quick shoulder stretch so I'm kind of tricking you by making you do all this upper body stuff so the mind is a little distracted and we can probably stay in this position for a little longer other side keeping the shoulder away from the ear stretching our posterior delts the back of our shoulders and release one last stretch and come sideways if you can clasp your hands grab them maybe your palms will touch maybe they'll not keep the elbows nice and bent and on the inhale lift the shoulders up and as you exhale and lower the shoulders you extend the arms to wherever you can you can always hold a towel or a belt in between your hands and then move the bind away from your low spine as you can see, I'm keeping a nice neutral low spine. So no excessive arch there. Yeah, we're feeling it in the feet. Last breath, hang in there. Bend the elbows, release the hands, come back into table, tap tap the top of the feet. Yeah. And then from our table, we'll come into a modified side plank. So you kickstand the left foot, left toes behind the left knee, extend the right foot long, press down through the inner and outer edge of the right foot, right arm reaches up. Now some of you might feel an intense um, stretch or burning sensation in the left hip. If it's too hard to hold this position, feel free to slide a block under the hand. That should give you some relief. Lift the right leg up. 
right arm can go up and over right hand can always stay on the hip all options available we bend the top knee the right one and we grab the foot if we can and then push the heart forward get a nice quad stretch the gaze can lift up if the neck blows one more breath release the foot arm goes up and then lower the foot down come back into your table maybe we shimmy the hips a little reset before we go on the other side the right foot kick stands this time behind the right knee might notice differences on each side maybe this side is a little more accessible or challenging than the previous one know that the block option is available for you we bend the knee we grab the foot I ran a half this Sunday and my muscles are still a little bit sore last breath release the foot release the hand and then lower the knee down lower the hand down we'll transition into our downward facing dog one more time inverted V rolling the biceps forward shoulder blades drawing towards the tailbone maybe the legs are able to extend a little bit more this time work towards stretching the calves a little in our down dog so keep the shape of the down dog and bend the knees inhale here exhale as you extend try lifting your toes inhale bend the knees exhale and by extension by no means we we are asking you to completely straighten the knees inhale bend exhale extend last one inhale and exhale you should feel intense stretch in your calves as you try to lift your toes even though the toes may or may not lift as long as you're trying to do that action you'll feel it one more breath lower the knees down good job let's take a quick child pose so if you have blanket on the mat just clear it out big toes touch hips towards the heels walk the hands out and lower the forehead down if you feel like your hips are too far from your heels you might want to slide a block or maybe stack the palms under your forehead take your variation take few breaths here breathe take one last breath all right walk the hands back towards you we'll go into a low lunge so the blanket comes back on the mat blocks can come in pretty handy let's start on our right side so step the right foot forward uncurl the left toes and find a depth in your lunge by that i mean sliding that left knee back or drawing that right heel forward so you don't want to be over here in a boxy lunge you want to lengthen out the lunge because we are trying to get into our left psoas pausing here just pushing the hips forward to get into that muscle the top of the left thigh all right a little bit of movement so inhale push the hips back ever so slightly exhale focus more on sending the hips forward and getting that stretch stretch pardon me few more inhale exhale keeping the torso upright if you can couple of more inhale and exhale last one inhale send the hips back a little dynamic stretching exhale forward and then try to keep that back heel in line with the back knee so 
the foot sometimes like to sickle from here we'll go into our half split our arthadmanasan so crawling the front toes forward perhaps and then trying to straighten the leg if the hamstrings are feeling tight keeping the blocks under the shoulders is a good idea if they're nice and open and you're in a deep fold um, you might not need blocks or you can if you have blocks you can take the blocks further up and try to hold take a pick more upright position blocks close to you when you are folded hands or blocks away from you wherever we are let's curl the toes oftentimes the front hip likes to lean to the other side so make sure you are pushing this right hip a little bit to the right side and the pinky side of the right toes pointing towards the hip it also likes to sit in. One more breath. Rebend the knee and we don't have to draw the heel back. We're just going to crawl the right toes towards the left edge of the mat. Bring the block, right block close to you and then straighten the leg again. Now we are trying to get to the outer hip, the IT band, the outer leg. So you might feel it in your outer calf. Now stay here or you can place the left hand on top of right. If you feel like you can go deeper, you can always lower the setting of your block. You are going to be here for a bit. Keep an eye on that right pinky should point towards the hip. One more breath. Unwind. And then draw that heel back in. We are going to um, go for a groin stretch. So bring the back knee and the front heel in line. And then kick style the back foot. So left heel behind the left knee. We'll go back and forth a little. And you can always adjust the front foot. So if you feel like it's too close to you, you can always move it further up. The knee can go past the ankle. Last one. Left hand on left thigh, right arm goes up. Take a bend. The right knee is pushing towards the pinky side of the right foot. So don't let it cave in. One more breath. Unwind. Find your blocks again. Left ankle comes behind the left knee and bring the right knee back. Take a little break in Vajrasan. Maybe closing down the eyes. Connecting with the sensations that came up with all that stretching in the right leg and the left one too. We'll stretch the right hamstring, the right IT band, the left psoas. Let's go on the other side, blink the eyes open if they're closed. Step the left foot forward, we'll start with lunge. Keep a um, railroad track distance between your legs. So don't keep the front heel, you know, in front of the right knee. You want it a little bit on the left side. Send the hips forward. Again, the blocks closer to you provides more stability. Inhale, send the hips back. Exhale forward. Few more torso is nice and upright and know that 
uh, where you arrive in a pose is not where you have to stay all the time. Sometimes after some movement, we feel like there is room to go deeper. So in a pose like this, you might want to slide the back knee back a little more. We'll hold here. Sometimes we might want to back off. We might go too far and we might want to back off. So know that those are all your options. That's why it's called a mindful practice. You're really connected with your body, your breath. We'll go into our half split, Ardhanvanasan. Send the hips back. Stay here or allow the front heel to go forward a little. Curl the toes, hold. You can lower the setting of your blocks. Knee can always stay bent. You actually don't want to lock the knee out. So micro bend in the knee is advisable. If you're very open, still have a micro bend in the knee. And curl the left toes. All right, bend the knee and then crawl the foot to the right edge of the mat and then straighten the leg again. Point that left pinky toe is pointing towards the hip, it's nice and curled. You can keep the uh, right hand on right block, left hand on left block and turn just your chest towards the left side or the right hand can come on top of left. Lean a little into the right hip and energetically draw that left heel back in space. That should intensify the stretch. I'm feeling it. Last breath. Right hand finds right block. Draw that heel in. We'll go into that groin stretch. So front heel and back knee come in line. And then extend the right ankle behind the right knee. Let me move this down out of the way. And then let's just go back and forth. You can keep the right toes curled or come on top of them. Just going back and forth. Some dynamic stretching. My left knee is pointing straight up. And then push forward. Get a nice stretch going. Take the left arm up and bend backwards. So the Left hip is reaching forward while the left arm is reaching back. Last breath. Come back center. Back to Vajrasana. Close down the eyes. Place your hands on your thighs. Notice how it felt on this side. I usually get a little more sore in my left side. So I definitely felt more sensation on this side. So just notice if you feel something similar. connecting with the breath. Blink the eyes open. We'll come on our hips here. So just move the blanket out of your way and bring the feet out in front of you. We'll get into our hips a little. Hands by your side. You can lean back, bring your feet as wide as the mat or go wider and then windshield wiper the legs. Try lowering the knees all the way down if you can. So there's an external rotation of the hip happening here, an internal rotation of the other hip. One more time each side. And then let's bring our left shin forward 
So we'll come into our 90-90 position and then from there we'll transition into our pigeon pose. Bring the hands in front of you, extend the right leg long and then square out the hips towards the mat. So both hip points are facing the mat. The left heel closer to the um, right leg is going to give you a little more <coughs> room, make it more accessible. If you feel you're very open, you can go as far as bringing the left shin parallel to the short end of the mat. So you take your pick and then slowly lower down. I like to stay on my forearms. It keeps the stretch more active. If you wish to go all the way down, by all means. Really drawing that right hip down towards the mat. If you feel very intense stretch in the left hip, there's a you know um, tendency of rolling to the side. So check that in your body. One more breath. Now roll to the left hip and bring the right ankle in front of left. We'll take a seated twist, Arvatsan This is a more accessible position. If you want to go deeper, you can always place the right ankle outside the left thigh. So take your pick, right ankle in front of left or a right ankle outside the left thigh. Right hand comes behind us left hand outside the right knee inhale find length and exhale twist and know that all twists happen through the thoracic spine not from our cervical not from our neck not from the low spine so keep the hips nice and rooted and just turn the chest turn the ribs to the side and see if you can belly breathe here so just thinking of the belly as a balloon and inflating and deflating that balloon as you breathe. Really letting all the air out when you exhale. Maybe closing down the eyes, two more breaths. Unwind and we'll go for pigeon on the other side, starting with the 90-90, right shin in front of us. And if pigeon is just not accessible for you, you can always stay here. You can bring the hands in front of you. You can lower your forearms on the mat or on blocks. Left leg goes all the way back. Square out the hips towards the mat. Find length, inhale here. Exhale, slowly lower down on your forearms or all the way down to make the stretch passive. If you feel like you could go a little deeper, you can always roll on the right hip, the front hip, move the shin away from you and then roll back on. Little tricky, just giving you an option. Um, your front hip is not touching the mat like mine you can always slide a blanket cushion under the hip that helps you release a little bit deeper I'm just being lazy one more breath roll on the right hip bring the left ankle in front of right or left ankle outside the right thigh I'm gonna take this option on this side left hand comes behind right hand outside the left knee inhale lengthen exhale twist you can even wrap the forearm around if you're in this variation of the twist belly breathing again if you're in this deeper twist just be mindful of the hips 
position. I will keep anchor down sometimes the left hip tends to roll off the mat. More breaths. Unwind, lean back, bring the legs out in front of you. Shake, shake, shake. And then we'll come all the way on our belly. Just a couple of more stretches. So, however you want to, just meet me in a prone position. And then bring your forearms in front of you. Elbows more or less under the shoulders, palms facing down, parallel forearms. And then find a very active sphinx pose. So you're energetically drawing the elbows back and moving the chest forward, engaging the upper back. Feeling the stretch in the front body. One more breath. And then slowly lower down, making a pillow with one hand or two in Makarasana. Bending the knees. Windshield wiper. Let's extend the left leg long. Keep the right knee bent. Let's see if you can find a quad stretch. Grab your foot. Last breath. Release the foot. Make the leg long. Switch sides. Head is supported by the back of the right palm. Left hand grabs the left foot. Deep breaths. On the next breath, release the foot. We are going to <clears throat> bend the right knee and bring the right knee towards the right shoulder. I like to sometimes sleep in this position. And always turn the head towards the right. And slide a blanket under. This is the... Mm, Second last pose of our practice, we're just going to child pose from here. Really thinking about concluding the practice. See if you can feel a sense of completeness in your experience in the body. Perhaps finding a sense of restoration, calmness. Slowly extend the leg long, face towards the mat, switch sides. Option to turn the head towards the left. Breathing deep still. Whenever we are laying down prone on our belly, we have a nice opportunity to expand the back ribs, the side ribs. So continue to breathe deep. Last breath. Slowly extending the leg long. Bring the hands by your side and 
you can either roll on your back and go into Shavasana and rest there or you can press yourself up and back and take a few breaths in your child pose. So you pick where you want to end your practice. If you have time, I encourage you to take Shavasana. If you're ready to end the practice, just walk your hands back towards you, come into any comfortable seat. I'm choosing to be in Vajrasana. Thank you so much for allowing me to lead you through this stretching class. Hopefully you feel relaxed. I certainly do. See you next time. Thank you.